initially announced postponement of the Olympics. That kind of hit me hard because I was like, wow, like my whole life I looked at Tokyo 2020 has been the year. So that kind of threw me off. But since then, there's been so many changes. I've just kind of tried to relax, stay in my zone and just follow the direction of my coach. So I've kind of left just that side to him and just do what he says. Oh, 100%. This is like the difference between competing on the international stage and the Olympics for me is like, it's just massive and it's been my dream ever since I was a kid just to compete at the Olympics. So it's another step up, definitely. So I've always been into content, making YouTube videos, Instagram videos as a kid and then I posted one of my diving videos on TikTok. Now I was a little bit like reluctant to get into TikTok because of what, like, I was like, oh, it's for kids. But no, I jumped on it and I got addicted so quickly, like most of us do. And then I posted a diving video. It kind of popped off a bit. So I just posted more diving videos, then expanded, started making funny videos videos about me and my friends of a weekend and then now I just video what I love to do and just just put it up. Alright guys so something is really cool about the Olympics. Uh, so the mattress is a little bit hard but luckily they gave us this topper which can make the bed either harder or softer so I whacked it straight on. I reckon, I think it's great. So I share like me and Brit she's also got like 430k as well or something and it's I think it's great to share the sport and get some media out there of like really inside firsthand of like what we're doing and the training and I think it's really good for diving and for us as athletes. Oh, it's crazy, yeah. I, you know, you get recognized sometimes at the shops and that. Um, my friends, yeah. My friends just laugh it off, so do I. I think it's kind of cool and really grateful for just people that want to support me and follow my diving career.